Hello again. In this video uh, we are going to talk about the interplay between the project product and project organization during the execution of the project. Okay, uh, let's uh, think about a project which we have here. This is the time axis. Uh, we have here the start of the project and uh, here in the other end we have the uh, completion of the project. Well, um, at the completion we have uh, the project product, which I abbrevi abbreviate uh, with uh, PP, project product. Okay, that is the project end product, if you like. Uh, then, in the beginning, we actually have uh, a project product design P P D as an acronym. Um, and uh, the project product or the project end product is the kind of a result or outcome or the value creation, uh, value creating thing that continues creating value uh, after the completion of the project. So um, it can be material or immaterial. It is the thing that uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, makes uh, the long-term value creation to happen. So uh, the project product as a concept, it includes uh, uh, the functionality, performance, usability, durability, maintainability, aesthetic characteristics, sustainability features of the product and so on. So uh, it is really the kind of a broad definition for the outcome uh, that uh, there is uh, at the completion of the project. And when we are talking about project product design, so the word design, uh, we can use uh, synonyms for the word design. It can be a plan or specification or even target. Uh, or targeted uh, design or targeted characteristics of the project product. Okay, so uh, in the beginning uh, we have uh, project product uh, design and uh, I put there the kind of a number one uh, as a kind of a uh, uh, index uh, to, to uh, refer to the first design that we have uh, that uh, makes a projection to the uh, uh, at, at the completion of uh, what uh, the expected uh, project product uh, would be, what its characteristics would be. Okay, then uh, during the project at some other point of time uh, we have uh, PPD2, so we have uh, adjusted or changed uh, the end product design. At certain other point of time we have PPD3. So at any point of time uh, during the project execution we can have different project product design. And then in the end we have PPD realized 
we have a realized product here uh, which has certain kind of a design as built design. Okay, then we also have the project organization PO. At point of time one or A, we have project organization with index A. The project organization uh, definitely it changes all the time. Certain uh, actors uh, enter the project while others exit, while they have had their job done. And also uh, the project organization can be uh, changed even radically based on the purpose where the organization is needed for. So uh, at certain other point of time we have project organization uh, index B, then P, O, C, and in the end, at the completion of the pro, uh, project, we have project organization, and I write here this dissolved. The project organization will be dissolved when the project is completed, so uh, then it has done the job and there is no project organization anymore. Only the project uh, product, the realized project product uh, is left. Okay, uh, with this, uh, let's say, introduction uh, in the Flipboard, uh, I show you the uh, next slide and uh, the uh, following animation in the slide. First, we have the time axis. It is uh, kind of a similar time axis corresponding to what I uh, now drew in the Flipboard. And uh, uh, to the right of the uh, picture, there is a design space. Design space for the destination where we are going to or design space for the uh, end product or project product. Okay. It is now described here in this picture as a kind of a linear uh, continuum, definitely. In, uh, in real world it is not, but uh, this just uh, illustrates the kind of uh, uh, different positions uh, where uh, we might aim at when we are uh, doing the project. What kind of a uh, project end product uh, design we are aiming at. Okay, let's start animating. First, here is uh, the uh, start of the project. And at the start of the project, uh, we have uh, end product design at point of time A. And in the design space or uh, in the kind of a uh, destination chart, we have the end product design at point of time A there. So that is where we are aiming at or that is our target, targeted end product design at point of time A. And we start our journey uh, and uh, this blue uh, line describes uh, how we have started uh, developing, uh, further designing and uh, implementing uh, the uh, end product towards uh, that end state. And the dotted line describes uh, our uh, anticipated path towards uh, that uh, and product design that we now have as our targeted uh, end product. At point of time B, we have another end product design, which is positioned in the uh, design space uh, here at the very top of uh, the continuum. So uh, we continue the uh, blue line with this uh, green line, uh, we change the direction and we try to aim to that new end product design and the dotted line uh, describes our anticipated path uh, to that end product design. Then at point of time C, 
we again, we have changed, we have adjusted or we have uh, redesigned our end product design. And uh, now we are aiming at uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, particular uh, uh, end product design uh, in the design space. And we continue the uh, green um, line with the red line because we are now aiming at uh, towards this newest, latest end product design. And the dotted line again uh, explains uh, where we expect uh, our path to uh, go. Then again, at point of time uh, D, we have uh, again another end product design. Again, our path changes and uh, the dotted line describes our uh, anticipated uh, planned uh, path towards that end product design. And again, uh, at a uh, point of time E, we have another end product design and we take uh, a turn and uh, then uh, start going towards that uh, direction. Uh, and the dotted line uh, tells uh, our expected path uh, toward that end product design until we still made, make some adjustments in the end and we find our realized end product and our realized end product design accordingly there at that point of uh, the uh, design space. Okay, now this illustrates the dynamism, how we change uh, the uh, end product and the end product design during the project execution. Now, we have a project organization uh, which now appears uh, in our picture at the point of, point of time A. And uh, the organization is typically described by uh, boxes and uh, by people. So we have here boxes and people uh, of our starting project organization. And uh, now one question that now I want to raise is that what is the relationship between the end product design at point of time A and uh, the organization at point of time A. So there is this question mark. Is this a chicken and egg problem? Is the end product design a starting point and we just uh, organize the project and uh, let's say have the project organization uh, as a resource to do uh, uh, the work according to this end product design and implement that uh, end product? Or does the organization at point of time A uh, design actually the end product? And does the organization define uh, where we are actually going by designing uh, the end product? even in the making of the product. Okay, then at point of time B, we have another organization. We have changed the project organization. So now we can see that there are uh, circles and uh, there are different kinds of people. At least they are upside down. And then at point of time C, we have different project organization. And uh, at point of time D, again, different project organization. And at point of time E, Again, a different project organization. Okay. Now, uh, the classic project management thinking uh, assumes often that uh, the end product design comes first. In the beginning of the project, we have certain kind of end product design, even though that would be ambiguous. And uh, then we have the project organization that follows. We organize the project to do the job, to implement that uh, product. And uh, uh, therefore, I have drawn uh, this uh, uh, arrow, dotted arrow uh, from the end product design uh, to uh, the kind of a project organization. End product design at point of time A to project organization at point of time B. Okay, we can also have other uh, arrows here indicating the fact that uh, the end product design uh, kind of determines uh, the project organization. 
but we also can uh, have this kind of a perspective where we have the project organization at point of time A affecting the end product design at point, uh, point of time B. And uh, this red arrow indicates that. So what kind of organization we have, that kind of capabilities we have to design and redesign uh, the end product. Again, we have these arrows uh, that point from the organization to the end product, telling us that the organization actually uh, does the designing in the making and affects the end product design and uh, eventually the end product that we get from the project. Okay, again, a green arrow and then uh, also this uh, turquoise arrow uh, from point of time C organization to point of time E uh, end product design. Okay, now we have gone through this kind of a dynamism and the animation and uh, my, uh, let's say, reasoning about uh, uh, possibly the project organization uh, really taking the, in char the charge of designing the end product. Now I'm going to uh, put there uh, the question, which is a kind of a research question. Uh, and the question is the following. How the project product can be continuously designed and redesigned during the uh, project for increased value. And my point here is that uh, when the project organization takes charge of the project, and especially if uh, the project organization takes charge of increasing the value of the project and its end pro product during the project execution, then uh, uh, the question can be asked that how and what kind of a project organization uh, is uh, the organization that uh, can really uh, increase or even maximize the value during the execution. What kind of an organization and, and, and how the organization does it. So my further question following this question that are now uh, on, on this slide uh, is that uh, can you recognize some empirical project case where the project organization has been capable of designing or changing the end product radically during the execution for increasing value. And if you can then what kind of a project that was and what kind of a project organization uh, was capable of doing that. Okay, um, well, where I'm aiming at is that uh, I suggest a new way of thinking about project management and having a value maximization approach in the management of a project. And uh, this is a kind of a change which would complement the uh, uh, previous or current classic project management thinking where we first uh, have a, the destination that is the end product or end product design or the target. And then we think that the organization only follows and it follows just to implement uh, that target or that uh, end product which uh, we have designed or which, which are given, given to the project. So uh, the Focus in the current uh, project management classic thinking is on path 
of taking the right kind of a path, right kind of a, uh, uh, let's say, implementation methods uh, to do the implementation of the project effectively. The focus is on path, not on destination. And my suggestion is that uh, the project and its management should as a temporary, the project as a temporary organization should take responsibility uh, to adjust the destination and increase or even maximize value. And uh, it even can be that if we really think uh, this my suggestion radically, we even could uh, think that uh, in the beginning, we almost don't need very uh, uh, specific or, uh, um, as, well, uh, designs of the end product or plans for the end product at all. Because if we put right kind of a project organization in place and give them uh, the task of uh, uh, doing the right kind of a project and maximize uh, the value, so the project organization is all we need because the project organization can uh, design and redesign the end product and uh, take uh, the project towards uh, an ideal uh, end state or ideal destination. And it even can be that uh, the very authorized project uh, organization a uh, very well authorized project organization can uh, renew itself. Uh, the project organization can hire uh, new members, can, uh, let's say, procure uh, certain kinds of uh, capabilities and uh, contractors or uh, actors to do the job uh, which is needed, whether that job would be designing the value maximizing end product or implementing or both. So the project organization uh, doesn't all uh, only uh, define uh, the ideal or value maximizing end product, but it can e even define and design itself uh, 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 in the way uh, when the project uh, unfolds or during the when the project unfolds. Uh, to also have a kind of a uh, uh, certain kind of scenario uh, about the future and what kind of resources are needed to really take uh, the project end product to kind of a uh, uh, new uh, to new and, and, and novel contents that increase value. Okay, this was my uh, message. It was nice to communicate it with you. This was also my suggestion for a new project management approach, where we really give uh, the project management a task of uh, uh, increasing or maximizing the value during the execution. So think about that and uh, thank you for uh, being with me in this video. So looking forward to seeing you uh, in some next videos uh, that, uh, where we might uh, meet. Okay, uh, see you, thank you, bye.